today I will talk about TinyMVM, my MVM library that I now have updated for .NET MAUI. So stay tuned. Today I will talk about something that I have worked with for a couple of years now. It started with a project for Summary Forms, but now I have updated it for .NET MAUI. And that is my MVM library, TinyMVM. I created TinyMVM to make it easier for me to reuse a lot of code that I had between my apps. And of course, I made it open source if someone else wants to use it. So the main features for TinyMVM is that I have a, a view model base class with some helper methods that you can override and also a navigation abstraction. The need for an abstraction of the navigation is maybe not as much as when I created TinyMVM, but I have still some features there. Even if I stripped away a lot of features that I had in uh, Summer Forms version of TinyMVM. And the reason is we don't need them anymore because .NET MAUI has been so good. So we can strip out everything related to IUC, for example. Also one of the reasons I created uh, TinyMVM, I needed some helpers for that. But today I will show you how TinyMVM works for .NET MAUI. So let's go to Visual Studio. So here I have an empty project. So what we first will do is that we will install the NuGet package. And the one that you should use is the one called tinymvm.maui. And you need right now to include pre-releases because it's just a pre-release. So we will take it here and install it. So to start use tinymvm, we only need to do one thing. We need to go to mauiprogram.cs. Then we need to add a using for tinymvm. And we can also do it as a global using if we don't want to add it on more places like this. Okay, so the next step is we can go down here and then just use tinyMVM. And then we can start using it for real. So what we need is a view model. So let's create one. Uh, we have a main page so that this can be a main view model. And here we can now use the base view model, the view model base, but it's called tiny view model. And that's something that not aligned with the Xamarin Forms version. It was called view model base before, but I changed it to tiny view model to align it with some other names on stuff in tiny MVM. for example, tiny command. So what you can do now is you have some overrides that you can do. You can, for example, override initialize and initialize will run when binding context is set. We have on appearing, on application resume, on application sleep, on disappearing, on first appear. And that means the first time this view or view model is used and parameter set. And that is when we're navigating to it and we have some parameters. So, but we can use initialize here if you want to load some data. Uh, and as you could see, we also had the on sleep, on application sleep and on application resume. To make that work, you need to go and change the base class of the application to tiny application. So we just need to import the namespace. this and then we change to tiny application like this. So and now we can override also on application sleep for example. We can use that if you want to unsubscribe for something when the application goes to sleep for example. So what we also have in tiny MVM we have some um, uh, 
properties like is busy that we can use and we also have is not busy but and but not but is not busy is updated when you set uh, is busy so you don't have to think about that so we can change this so we instead can write some code here so when we are loading data we can set this busy to true and when we're done we set is busy to false and here we can load the data uh, for example we can set a property let's say prop string name let's add a backing field if you don't want to create those backing field and properties and everything yourself I recommend you to take a look at the MVM community toolkit because there are some great stuff you can use with source generators but we will not use that in this demo but I highly recommend it because it's really great and in the set method we use a set method in the base view model and this will also raise the property changed event uh, when uh, we set this property and the property changed event is in the tiny view model that implements the inotify property changed interfaces are required if you use MVM. If you want to learn more about data bindings, I recommend you to take a look at my .NET MAUI and data bindings video that I did a couple of weeks ago. So now we can go to our view. Let's, let's use this main page. To make those methods like initialize to work, we also need to change the base view. And we do as in the application, we import the namespace, change the type to tiny view. And when we do this, we also need to go here and remove it here. Or we can also write tiny view here if we want to, but we don't need that because this is a partial view. Okay. So now we can go here and we need to also to register those views and view models to the IOC container and that is because we want to use dependency injection. So let's do that. Builder.services.add transient and main view model. And then we do the same with main page. And then we can go here and we can inject the main view model to the view. And now we can go to the main view model, you can set the breakpoint in initialize. You can also set the name here to Daniel. Uh, and to make this visible, we, of course, we need to have some label here. So let's add a label, text, binding to name, a binding to name. Uh, we can also add an activity indicator. Uh, And set is running and bind that to is busy. And so we will be able to see that we can add a short delay here on one second, like this. Okay, also we add a breakpoint here so you can see that it is working. And now the app is starting, so let's see if the breakpoint is hit or not. Yes, here we have it. And we can see that the label are set. Now we cannot see the activity indicator, but that is probably because of that is was loaded already before it was on the screen. And the... 
So we can set an breakpoint here and application sleep, then we can swipe the application away. And now we can see that the breakpoint hit on application sleep. So that's a good way so you can use that in your view models. You don't have to write that uh, stuff yourself every time. And it's using weak events, so you don't have to be afraid that tiny MVM will create some memory leaks in the background. So let's create a new page that we can navigate to. So we go here, new file, we create a new .NET Maui content page SAML because we want to use SAML and uh, we can call it about view. Uh, and now we need to add tiny MVVM here as well. So we can go here and just copy that and go back and add the tiny view as the base view. Okay. And we create a view model. About view model. And we add a tiny view model as the base class. And now when we navigate to it, we can send some parameters and we can override parameter set. Make it async. Wait. And now there are two ways that we can access parameters. We can use navigation parameter property from the tiny view model and that is used if you send a single parameter to the view model I will show you that soon and then we also have query parameters and if you send a query string for example or sending a dictionary with the parameters that one will be used so we can create two variables here so we easy can see with the debugger when they are set or not. So let's go to the main program and register also this one to the IOC container. And now we go to our main view model and we will add a command that should navigate to it. So public i command that is the generic command uh, from system windows input uh, show about and now we need a new tiny command you can use .NET Maui command if you want to it doesn't matter but if you want, don't want to have .NET Maui references in your view model you can use a tiny command then you can pass an action to it and now we can use the built-in stuff in TinyMVM for navigation. It's just a wrapper around the shell navigation and navigate to. And um, after this, we'll go and create a route. And we can, for example, name the route as same as the view model, so about view model. And here you can see we have two overrides, one with parameters and one with the uh, uh, just a key so we can do like that when we navigate to it and we will not pass any parameters or we can do like this hello and we can also pass a query string if you want to so then we will do like this id is like say one so and now we just need a button in the view Button, command, binding, show about, uh, text about. Okay, let's run. And we can see now we are in the parameter set method. We have query parameters, ed is one. And we have a navigation parameter, hello. So that is what you can use when you're navigating to views. You can also, if you want, send a dictionary directly and then that will be set as a query parameters. So if you read the documentation about shell navigation, you can see 
that uh, sending a dictionary is one way. And you can use it with uh, tiny MVVM as well because it's just a wrapper around it and some helper methods that make it easier to use in the view model. So if you have any feedback for tiny MVVM or if you want to contribute, just go to GitHub. You find it in the organization called Tiny Stuff where me and some colleagues have some other libraries as well. And the name of the repository is tiny MVVM. And we also have the some inform stuff in the same uh, repository, but I have split them in different solutions now. So it will be easier to work just with the tiny MVVM stuff. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, go and press the like button. And of course, subscribe to my channel because there will be more content about .NET MAUI. See you next time. Goodbye.